Hi there, this video is going to be called Sierra Chart Performance Optimizations. This video is going to be a follow up to some videos that are already existing on the Sierra Chart website, and you can find them by going to help topic number 30 on the Sierra Chart website, find the documentation, frequently asked questions, then find help topic 30, which is called high CPU usage or long time to load chart data. So this help topic contains documentation about many things that have the potential to slow down the software. So it is your responsibility as a user of the software to reference each one of these and determine what you need to be doing to reduce the processing load of the software um, if you are trying to achieve the fastest performance for low response time trading. That's kind of what I'm referring to here. I'm going to reference this documentation here and I will not go through every single point here. I made my own short list of things that I think is the most relevant. Um, I'm also going to reference this documentation which is something that was written about improving the performance of the chart trade DOM and I will also reference this page right here which is Sierra chart configuration for most low response time trading. So Sierra Chart is a very fast charting and trading platform. It has numerous features and a lot of capabilities through its studies to perform advanced analysis and provide charts which can span a long period of time. However, there are configurations you can use which can create a high CPU load within the software and can cause it to become less responsive at times. You definitely do not want to be trading live from an instance of Sierra Chart which is running under a high CPU load because this reduces the response times for submitting and processing orders. Sierra Chart typically is able to submit orders out to the external trading service in under 40 to 50 microseconds. It is designed for very low latency trading. However, with additional load, this will take longer. So guys, it is your responsibility based on what you are doing with the software and your own you know, system for trading or analysis to reference these documentations, make the changes that need to be made, make the compensations that need to be made, and in order to reduce the performance load of the instance of the software you're using for trading. So I will be using my own example here. So I use two instances of the software for my futures trading. If I was trading other assets and I had to connect to multiple trading services, I would be probably using even more instances of the software, okay? Meaning that more installations of Sierra Chart will be running at once on my PC. It is beneficial to have a processor that has more cores in it. So you can see here, they recommend that your computer should be using a minimum of a six core processor with at least 16 gigabytes of memory for optimal performance. It's also important to use solid state drives because they can drastically improve the loading times of charts. So let's get right to it. I'll explain to you my chart book and my own setup here. This is the main instance of the software that is running on my PC. And in this instance, if I go up to window and then windows and chart books, you can see here that there are only five charts in this instance of the software. This is the instance that I use to do my trading. This instance is kept very simple and bare bones to make sure that I have the most lowest response time and lowest latency trading possible. If I go into my task manager, this is the instance of Sierra chart that is being used for trading right here. You can see that it is barely even using 100 megabytes of memory and the CPU load varies between about 1% and maximum 5, 6% when you're clicking on charts and stuff. Okay. And I also have, you know, this chart book configured so that the charts are updating very fast. And we'll talk about that later in the video. This is the second instance of the software that I am using. In this instance, I have many longer time frame charts and study calculations that are being overlaid onto other charts. So basically the complicated stuff is in this sub instance right here. So it is very important that if you use complicated studies that need to calculate many days worth of data, charts with longer time frames or studies that take a long time to calculate, that stuff needs to absolutely be taken out of the instance you are using for trading. So I will go over to my second instance of the software here. And if we go up to window and then windows and chart books, in this instance, you can see that there's about 15 to 20 charts or so. 
And you also saw that the processing load is still quite minimal. Now, of course, it's gonna be different for you because everybody has their own sort of unique setup, but this is what I have. So I'm just simply showing you what I've done with my own setup and how I've optimized it. The first thing I made use of is using multiple instances of the software to distribute the processing load. Okay, so the next thing here, which is very important, is that number one, you need to be on the latest version of the software because recently there have been some improvements that have been made to the performance of the chart trading DOM. And you need to also be using the Denali Exchange data feed, which is the data feed that is being provided by Sierra Chart for CME Group Futures. The reason for that is because some of the optimizations I'm gonna show you are only possible to be made with the Denali Exchange data feed. I would say that CRR chart works the best with the Denali Exchange data feed. Let's go on now. Optimizations to make in the instance you are trading from. So many of you probably know this specific setting, which is called the chart update interval. If we go up to global settings, general settings, then general one, there is a global setting for the chart update interval in milliseconds here. This by default is set to something like 600 milliseconds. That is around two times per second. And if you're doing low response time trading and you need the fastest updates, that is going to be a little bit too high. The lowest this setting can go is 10 milliseconds. However, it is not recommended to keep it that low. If you set that as low as 10 milliseconds, it's going to mean that your chart is updating something around 50 or more times every second and human benchmark reaction time is nowhere close to that. It's around 200 milliseconds generally. So there's no point in setting that as low as 10 milliseconds. This is when I'm going to reference another piece of documentation here, which is improving performance of the chart trading DOM. So if you're looking for very fast updates on the trading DOM, follow the instructions below. The first thing is update it to the newest version. Second thing is use the Nally Exchange data feed. Third thing is you need to reduce the number of charts or DOMs in your instance to no more than four. Now, in my case, I have five charts, but you know, it's up to you. Other charts and complex charts need to be moved to sub instances. This is absolutely essential. It's simply not possible to have too many charts within an instance of Sierra chart and expect very fast updates. So depending on what your expectations are, you may only want to have one or two trading DOMs within a single instance. Additionally, the charts that you have open, they need to be very simple and contain barely any studies and they need to be very basic studies. Number four now, they recommend adjusting the chart update interval for the trading DOM or chart to a setting as low as 40 milliseconds which is going to be somewhere around updating 20 times per second, okay? Which is more than human reaction time can probably process anyways. So that is low enough, I would say. I have mine set to 40 milliseconds. You also need to make sure that you adjust this particular setting, which is in the Sierra chart server settings to around 40 milliseconds. And let's do that now. So for each one of these charts, they are overriding the global chart update interval. So I will go to chart settings for each one of my charts by selecting the chart and then pressing F5 or going to chart and then chart settings. So now that I'm in the chart settings, go to advanced settings. On the bottom right here is the chart update interval in milliseconds. If you set it to zero, it uses the global setting and you can override that setting by putting a different number here. So I have set all of these charts here to a chart update interval of 40 milliseconds. You can set this lower, but the lower you set it, the higher the risk is that you get something called a packet drop or packet retransmission, which is basically some form of lag or stop in the data feed, which is really not something you want to be happening while you're trading. The next setting you need to change is by going to global settings, then Sierra chart server settings. In here, we need to select the general tab. And these are the settings you need to be concerned with here. Real-time data compression works very well on standard compression. It is recommended to leave it there. The remote buffer delay send time in milliseconds should be set to around 40. I've tried to set it lower than this, but I'll be honest with you, it had not really increased the performance. Like I said, it increases the risk you actually get a lag in your data feed because you're requesting response times that your internet connectivity is not even possible to give you. Um, and again, it depends on a lot of things. If you're experiencing problems this low, you're going to have to put a higher number there for sure. But the lower you set this, the more updates you will get on your charts. It is not recommended to set it as low as 20 milliseconds. 
um, just because it increases the risk of packet drops, packet retransmissions, which will cause the data feed to lag and potentially stop for you know half a second or something. You really don't want that. Once you set those down to 40 milliseconds, um, your charts should be updating pretty fast at this point. You should be getting very low response time. Also considering your charts um, do not have any complex studies on them, things should already be performing pretty fast. Okay, let's move on. The next thing you need to be aware of in the main instance of the software is for each one of your charts, you wanna make sure that you are not loading many days worth of data. Because remember, this chart book is being used for trading and you're not really doing bigger picture analysis. So generally in your chart settings, you set the number of days to load to one or two days at most. And the second thing you should do is go to file, data and trade service settings, and in the common settings tab here, you will find the maximum historical intraday days to download where you have tick by tick data. Set this to a lower number than what is there by default. And um, this will decrease the size of your data files in your Sierra chart folder. And of course, um, for highest accuracy in the software for tick by tick data, your intraday storage time unit needs to be set to one tick. If you set it to anything else, you're not gonna be receiving tick by tick data. So if you're doing accurate uh, bid ask analysis, that will not be precise unless this is set to one tick, all right? All my charts are set to load only one day's worth of data. Now, where you will notice a performance impact is when you start full screening the chart and zooming out. If you have many, many days worth, that can easily sort of lag the chart because there's many prices that need to be loaded and all of that. So especially if you're using volume by price studies. So as you can see on these charts, I am using volume by price studies, um, some of which are hidden away now because I was doing some tests, but there you can see it. Now these volume by price studies in particular are not using any processing power. So I guess we can talk about studies now before we go on to the last few notes I have for you guys here. So on all these charts, um, there's a few studies, some are custom studies, but what you can do to determine if your studies are taking a processing power, you click on your chart, press F6, or go to analysis and then studies to open up the studies menu. Now on the right side of this, you can see your existing studies where it says here zero milliseconds. That's how long it's taking these studies to calculate. So as you can see in my case, it is not really taking any time to calculate these studies because I'm not requiring a lot of data from these studies, I guess. Now, if I were for some reason requesting a lot more data with this volume by price study, then it would take longer to load it. So for example, I have one, two, three volume by price studies here. All of them are only requesting a few bars worth of data. These two are requesting three bars worth of data and this one is requesting 12 bars worth of data. So I have them set to a, a setting of one period based on bar count, and the bar count is set to three bars in this case. The other studies are very simple, a moving average and a custom study. So those are the studies I've got, and I have not noticed any performance impact from having these studies on the chart. Now, probably I can improve my performance by removing all of this, but you know, at the end of the day, there is gonna be a compensation between what you need to be seeing on your chart, okay? So, you know, theoretically, I could have the fastest updates possible, but to what degree do I really need that? What's more important, the fastest updates or seeing the right data on my screen that is important for my trading method? So, you know, that's where the compensation is, of course. Okay, so the next thing on our list here is keeping all of your charts attached to the main Sierra chart application. Now, I've talked with a few programmers about this and I've asked them their opinions and they did agree with what is written on the Sierra chart documentation about this. So we have observed that detached charts consume more operating system user objects and increase CPU usage. The reason for this would be strictly due to the operating system and is not related to Sierra chart. So therefore it's recommended if you want the lowest risk of increasing your performance, then you keep everything attached. Okay, so window, attach and detach, window, keep them all attached basically. So in this chart book, I have five charts and they are all attached to the main application. Now, I can't really give you all the theoretical reasons as to why that would increase performance, but remember the list contains small tweaks that in the case that you have many of these adding up, 
it is going to impact the performance of the software. If you have only a couple, then obviously it's not going to be that bad. Uh, for example, they do say that linking the scroll position for charts will increase processing power. But in my particular case, I have the scroll position on these four charts linked together. Now, maybe I can unlink that, but I'll have to think about it. Just to show you what I was referring to, that is in the chart settings, advanced settings too, and the chart linking. So I have a few things that are linked here for those four charts. The next optimization to make is the maximum number of market depth levels you are allowing for your instance of the software. And the way you fix that is by going to global settings, CR chart server settings, and now here, max depth levels. So again, it depends on your needs. I have it set to eight because I trade thicker markets. I don't really need to see many levels of depth. Um, of course, if you trade a thinner market, you're going to have to set that to a higher number, which will impact the performance of the software, of course. So again, compensation, but you're going to want to set this as low as possible. The next setting is in the chart settings itself for each individual chart. So chart settings, advanced settings three, maximum market depth levels. For each chart, I have it set to five, but again, it's going to depend on you. It does show you the drawing time here for those levels. Keep it as low as possible there to improve the performance. Okay, so the next optimization here, dotted or dashed lines greater than or equal to two pixels in width. Basically, you wanna keep them out of your chart book or graphics totally. You wanna be using only solid lines, okay? It's all documented here. The reason for it is because Windows uses something called a geometric pen for these draw styles here, dashed lines, dotted lines, and they say that it only happens if they're greater than two pixels. I took this into account when creating my chart book and I just kept everything as solid lines. So if they are saying that dotted lines use more processing power, then keep dotted lines out of your chart book totally for maximum efficiency. So if you use drawing tools, make sure that they are solid lines. Grid lines on your chart should be kept to solid lines, okay? All right, guys, the next one is transparent draw styles. Another graphics issue here. Basically, avoid transparent draw styles at all costs, um, especially on certain studies like volume by price. In the volume by price study, for example, you can choose to um, turn on transparency, just turn it off. I mean, if, unless you really need it, just turn it off, okay? Because it's gonna increase the performance load. You just wanna keep your chart book as minimal as possible and only what you need Okay, you don't want to have a lot of drawings and graphics going on in the chart book because the more things you have going on, of course, the more it's going to increase the performance load. Now, I have found that this particular chart book performs very well uh, for my personal needs. So that is it. And remember that your needs are probably different. So you're going to have to make the appropriate optimizations for your own chart book. Okay, guys, I hope this helped you and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.